career in cellular, and I spent the majority of my career in cellular, and chances are uh, I contributed to that silly little device you carry in your pocket that you uh, stare at incessantly all day, so I apologize for that. Uh, about six years ago, I, uh, I switched gears and, and pivoted to, um, get this, agriculture. And why agriculture? Number one, believe it or not, I think agriculture is one of the most innovative industries out there. If you look at the past, there's been three major transformations in agriculture. Uh, mechanization, uh, the refinement of pesticides and uh, fertilizer, and hybridization of seed. Um, and I, uh, I am convinced the next transformation in agriculture will be autonomy. Now, for all you that have uh, no experience in agriculture, I can tell you that uh, it defies logic. Uh, John F. Kennedy best summed it up. He said, the farmer is the only person who um, pays retail, sells wholesale, and pays the freight both ways. Um, and so, so I've been involved in agriculture for the last six years, and I, 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 I can't believe it. I can't, some of the things I see. And I, I know autonomy is going to fix that. So let me start with a story. So I'm sitting in Chicago, and uh, I have to go out and, and visit a farmer about two hours away. So I jump on I-90, and I'm heading out of town. And uh, on I-90, I see one of these. And uh, like you, the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, that's a hell of a car. <laughs> and then the second thing is, uh, you know, uh, I wonder who's driving it. I, I mean, are they famous? And by the way, I have seen uh, Mr. T drive a Rolls Royce down I-90. Or is it some guy who's going through a midlife crisis? Uh, and then, uh, you know, the logical portion kicks in, and I, I think to myself, who, uh, you know, why would someone buy a car like that? It only fits two. Um, I, I've, I've been near these cars. There's no trunk space. Um, and then the financial por uh, part of me, discipline, kicks in. And, uh, you know, oh God, what does that thing cost? Um, where, uh, you know, how much do parts cost? Um, where does it get maintained? And, and, you know, he only drives it maybe you know, on the weekends, never in the winter, never in the spring or the fall, always the summer. So I go down the road further, another, another hour and a half, and I come across this. And I guarantee you, you have the same thought that goes through my mind is, God, I'm glad I'm not behind him. <laughs> so I did a little research, and um, I came across this Lamborghini Roadster. It's a 2016, um, three years old. It's got 1,200 miles. Um, barely less than 24 hours of driving, and it comes in at uh, a quaint uh, $503,000. Meanwhile, um, in Harcourt, Iowa, there is a 2018 John Deere S790 combine for $509,000, and it's got 290 hours of, of use on it in one year. That's less than 3%. I, I, you know, in all the other industries I've been in, I have never seen more widespread, underutilized, expensive capital as I see in agriculture. And, um, you know, 3%, uh, uh, as they said in the Wolf on Wall Street, uh, we've got to bump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. And I think autonomy is going to do that. So let's turn the Wayback Machine, Mr. Peabody. Um, I grew up on a farm, and uh, believe it or not, over the summers, my job for $3 an hour, I would bale hay, walk beans, shell corn, and milk cows. Uh, that was my job um, all week. Uh, my mother was my agent, and she would schedule my time <laughs> and, 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 and make sure I'm on time, too. Um, um, but every farmer over the last six years, I meet with these farmers, there's no kids like that anymore. I was the last of a legend. Um, so what are farmers doing now? Uh, so, th um, so this is really interesting. When you go into, uh, when I meet these large farmers, 
Believe it or not, I look at their org chart, I observe their, their, their operations, and they're run like a corporation, believe it or not. And there's always one to three people who are at the helm, they're, ex they're the executives, one's the CEO, he's in charge of everything, usually the oldest kid, right? And then you have, a, 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 you know, usually a middle kid, he's the COO, he's in charge of all the operations, keeping everything running. And then you have another one who is the, uh, he's the CFO, he's in charge of marketing and selling grain, but negotiations on, on inputs and whatnot. Then you go one level down, the directors, and it's always, it's, it's one of two people, I swear to God, it is, it is one of the executive's children, or it's a kid they went to high school with. <laughs> Guarantee it. Now, uh, and then you go one level down, and this is where it gets really complicated. They have to hire uh, operators. And these operators, the requirements are, they have to be industrious, they have to know how to drive a tractor, an applicator, a combine, they have to know farming practices, they have to know the electronics, GPS, all that, and quite often they have to have a CDL license. So where do they find these? Um, retired teachers, uncles, um, just people they know, older guys who you know, are snowbirds and they want a little money to go on vacation and whatnot. Um, but th those guys are running out as well. And so a couple years ago, believe it or not, I'm on this farm and I, I swear to God I was on the set of a Crocodile Dundee movie. And, and these guys were wearing shorts. Um, farmers don't wear shorts for all you city folk. Um, and, and, and I'm like, who, who, who are these people? And uh, um, the guy said, well, they're, they're here on H2A. And so they bring these, uh, these, these people from other countries in. And this guy had over 20 South African farmers So think about that. He had to go to South Africa. That's on the other side of the world, if, you know, for all you geography, uh, you know, don't understand geography. Um, they had to bring, the, bring those people in. And, and I just thought to myself, what's going to happen when that dries up? And autonomy is going to solve that. Um, so here's the ne next, the, the other thing that I find interesting. Um, first robotics competition, uh, Dean Kamen in 1992 started this, and he claims it's his greatest invention. This guy's an entrepreneur, I've met him, brilliant guy. Um, he, he holds this contest where these, little, these high school kids show autonomy in, uh, in a competition, and they have to move to a place and set some actuators, perform some task, move to another one. Very similar to what's, what, what's needed in agriculture. Um, last year there were 3,600 teams competing from 27 countries. This organization kicked out 91,000 contestants. So think about it. There's 91,000 kids running around with a solution for a problem unknown. And those kids are going to be involved in agriculture. If you look at institutions, um, we have in Fargo, congratulations to Grand Farm, love it. 45 acre farm, they promise uh, autonomy in 2025, fully autonomous farm, awesome. Um, in Purdue, there's this Eggbot Challenge. Uh, every year they get together and these, these teams compete, they have to show autonomy in agriculture. I personally was a judge for that. I know for a fact two companies, one mine, came out of that. And uh, I actually hired a kid that, uh, that was a contestant on there. Um, and I don't know if anyone knows this, but this is a very defining moment. Last year, 2018, in Wikipedia, agricultural robot became a topic. It's very important. Oops, I gotta go back. Okay. Um, so I have a startup and we're doing autonomous uh, agriculture and um, I, so I watch the industry and I, I'm getting inundated with companies popping up, solutions popping up. They're planting, they're applying um, chemicals and fertilizer, they're seeding, they're uh, controlling grain carts, they're weeding, they're seeding, 
they're um, sampling, they're scouting. Some are big, some are small. Um, some will succeed, some will fail, but I guarantee you each one will be a stepping stone to the ine inevitable. And I contend that uh, the next transformation in agriculture will be autonomy. Thank you.